there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's a GCSE Maths video and in this video we're going to talk about solving equations, in particular one-step equations. So what I'd like us to be able to do in this video is solve equations of the following four kinds. Uh, an equation with one addition, one subtraction, one multiplication and one division. They're called one-step equations. Now, I'm going to present you 10 examples and I'm going to give you some uh, questions to try uh, on your own at the end. Now, in this video, it, it, because they're one step, you may look at it and think, I know what x is, I can guess x. Now, I know for these simple cases you can, but the point of this video is to show you how to lay out your algebra working. And we're going to start off with these simple cases where in theory you could guess the x, but... Um, you will not be able to guess in more complicated equations. So I'm showing you from first principles with easy equations how to lay your working out. So yeah, you could guess these answers. That's not what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you how to lay it out so we can get to the harder uh, grade B, A and A star questions. So it's important you write down as I do. Here's the first question. Example one, solve for x. So we're trying to find what x is equal to. Now, I always do this off at the side when I see an equation. I go over here and I just describe what happened to x. What happened to x? So x started off and what happened to x? You added 6. Now, how do you undo that? Well, the opposite of adding 6 is to subtract 6. Now, that gives me a hint what to do to both sides. So what I'm going to do to both sides is I'm going to subtract 6 off both sides important you write this, uh, the subtract 6 underneath the numbers in the, in the equation above. So I'm going to subtract 6 off both sides. I'll still be left with my x here. 6 take away 6 is nothing. My equals is here and 10 take away 6 is equal to 4. Very important your equals is lined up down the page. That is absolutely vital. Very important you show what you do to both sides of the equation like that. And then when you've got that, you check 4 was right. 4 add 6 is 10, and I know I'm right. So this is how you lay out your working uh, for algebra. Okay. Now, I know you could have guessed that answer, but we're not interested in guessing. We're interested in building up to more complicated algebra. Example 2. x subtract 13 is equal to 17. So let's think what happened to x over here. What happened to x is that you subtracted 13. To undo that, the opposite of that, to find your x back, you must have to add 13. So what I'm going to do to both sides is I'm going to add 13 onto both sides as follows. Put a line underneath and work out what that turns out to be. So we'd have x is still left here. Negative 13 add 13 is 0. Your equals is lined up perfectly. And 17 add 13 is equal to 30. And finally, check your answer. 30, subtract 13, is indeed 17. I know I've done it right. Okay, next one. Now, 20 subtract x is equal to 3. Now, I can clearly see x is going to be 17 here. Absolutely clearly. 20 take away 17 is equal to 3. Now, I'm just showing you this technique so that we can do more complicated equations later on. Whenever I see negative x... Uh, when I'm trying to solve for x, what I tend to do is I multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. I multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. The reason is it will make the negative x a positive x and it will change the signs of everything else. So if I do that, um, I, would get, um, I would end up getting negative 20 add x is equal to negative 3. Okay, now actually I can rewrite that negative 20 add x, I can rewrite that as x subtract 20. As follows. Okay, so x subtract 20 is negative 3. Now at this stage I say what happened to this x, well what happened to x is uh, it, 20 got subtracted from it, so how do I undo that? I add 20. So from this equation I'm going to add 20 to both sides. And I'm going to get myself, therefore, that x is negative 3, add 20, which is 17. And I check my answer. Now, I know that seemed rather complicated in comparison to just guessing it, and I do agree. However, when we get to more complicated examples, this could be a very useful technique, so it's something to bear in mind. 
Example 4. Solve for x. Well, what happened to x? Well, you added 5. So how do you undo that? What's the opposite? You're going to subtract 5. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I'm going to draw my line underneath. And therefore, we're going to be left with x on this side is equal to 0 subtract 5 is negative 5. Check your answer. Negative 5 add 5 is indeed 0. OK, let's try another example. x add 8 is negative 3. What happened to x? You added 8. So how would you undo that? Well, you're going to subtract 8. So let's subtract 8 from both sides. Draw our line. And we're going to get ourselves that uh, x is going to be equal to 3 subtract 8, which is negative 5. Now, if you're not sure where that comes from, always draw yourself a number line if you're struggling with your uh, adding and subtracted ne negative numbers. So you're at here's 0, you're at 3, and you're going to subtract 8. You're going back 8 in, the, in that way. So if you go back 3 and then go back another 5, that's the same. You'd end up at negative 5. Okay, next one. Now, solve for x. We've got 2x is equal to 16. Remember what this means. That means 2 multiplied by x is equal to 16. Okay, now let's think what happened to x. x got multiplied by 2. How do we reverse that process? Well, we're going to divide by 2. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 2. And the way I'm going to show it is like this. Divide by 2 and divide by 2. Now you'll notice 2x divided by 2 is simply x. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay, so checking our original equation, 2 times 8 is equal to 16. I know I've got it right. Next one. 3x is equal to 36. So actually, this time I'm just going to write 3x is equal to 36 because it's on this line I should do my uh, working. What happened to x? I multiplied by 3. Going backwards, how do I undo that? I divide by 3. So divide both sides by 3 as follows. And I would get that x is 36 divided by 3, which is 12. Let's check our answer. 3 multiplied by 12 is indeed 36. So I know I've done it right. Okay, another one. Now, we've got 3x is equal to 8. So what happened to x again? It got multiplied by 3. Going backwards, we're going to divide by 3. Now, you might think, why did I do this one? It's very similar to this one. Let me show you why. I divide both sides by 3 so that I get that x is equal to 8 divided by 3. Now, the reason I wanted to show you that is 8 divided by 3 is not a whole number. We can check it on the calculator. 8 divided by 3 is 2.66666 recurring. Now, students feel under pressure to write down a decimal, 2.6. But I don't want students to do that. It's absolutely fine to leave your answer as a fraction. It's more exact that way. In fact, it's better than this way. So don't decimalize everything. Leave it as a fraction. You could, of course, have converted that to a mixed number, which would be 2 and 2 thirds if you had wanted to, but there's no need to do that. x is 8 divided by 3 is absolutely fine. OK, question 9. So we've got x. What happened to it? Well, it got divided by 2. So to undo the process, we're going to multiply by 2. So I'm going to rewrite my top line, x over 2 is equal to 8, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So multiply by 2, multiply by 2. Now you'll remember from previous work that if I multiply by 2, that's like multiplying by 2 over 1, which would just give me 2x over 2, which is just x. So always, by multiplying by whatever the denominator is, if you multiply a fraction by whatever's on its denominator, you just get the numerator. So we would get, therefore, that x is equal to 16. And let's check. 16 divided by 2 is indeed 8. Last example, x divided by 5 is equal to 7. So what happened to x? It got divided by 5. So let's go backwards. How do we uh, undo dividing by 5? We multiply by 5. So therefore, let's rewrite this. x divided by 5 is equal to 7. 
Let's multiply both sides by 5. Remember, when you multiply a fraction by its denominator, you just get the numerator. So x is going to be 35. And 35 divided by 5 is indeed 7. So we're done now. I've shown you all the 10 cases and 10 examples of one-step equations. Here are some for you to try yourself. Pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you the answers in 10 seconds. There you go. Okay, and here are the answers. And um, hopefully you found that useful. Let me just go through the challenge one here. The challenge one is going to be 13 subtract y is equal to negative 5. Remember when I said you have a negative, what could be good is to multiply both sides by negative 1. So you would change this equation to y subtract 13 is equal to um, 5. Then add 13 to both sides you do indeed get y is equal to 18. Okay, hopefully you found that useful and now you're a master at one-step equations and in particular, how to write it accurately so we can build on this and do more complicated ones.